you do leave, you are declared a suppressive person. Once you're declared a suppressive person, you can no longer speak with any of your family if they are involved in Scientology whatsoever. You cannot speak to any friends. You cannot sp speak to any business acquaintances. Anybody involved in Scientology, you have no further communication with, period, ever again, ever. When I left Scientology in 2005, the fam my family members that were still in Scientology were all contacted before I could contact them and told never to communicate with me ever again. When I, le when I left in 2005, my mother was told never to speak to me again, and I hadn't even been able to tell her why I left or to even speak to her for one last time and say goodbye. She was taken from me from sci by Scientology, and I have not spoken to her since, and I probably will never speak to her ever again. My sister was moved to Canada, and they changed her name so that I would not be able to locate her. And I have not spoken to her since 2005. So, sorry. In 2006, a friend of mine that also worked for Scientology and had left and was also a declared suppressive person and had not talked to his mom in several years, was contacted by Scientology. At this time, I was starting to speak out against Scientology, and I was becoming a major problem for them in the United States. They contacted him and said, if you go and find Mark Headley and meet up with him and get any sort of blackmail material on him, we'll let you talk to your mother again, and we will undeclare you as a suppressive person. This person, knowing me very well, knew that I wouldn't, wouldn't have anything that he could blackmail me, with me in the first place, but that also he was my good friend. He wouldn't do that to me. So he had no other choice but to meet with me and tell me what had happened. In case you think my experiences are isolated only to the United States, they're not. L. Ron Hubbard wrote one set of policies, and they are applied they are to be applied to every single Scientology organization in the world. There's no exceptions. There, there's not a version for Germany. There's not a version for Australia or for Canada. There's one version, and that version is the, is the sacred text that is supposed to be applied to all Scientology organizations throughout the entirety of the world. I've been to many Scientology organizations around the world as well. I've been to, I'd say, at least 100 different Scientology organizations in my 15 years of working for Scientology, and I can tell you that I've witnessed, witnessed the abuses that I've mentioned above in every single one of these organizations. Because we're in Germany, I wanted to give you a little small story that may or may not shed some light on how Scientology executives view this country. There was two Scientology executives at the international headquarters, and uh, we'll call one the boss and one the worker. The worker had just purchased a brand new BMW. It was a, an awesome car. It was, you know, it was brand new. The Scientology boss found out that this guy had bought a BMW and he had him called to his office. And the worker showed up at the office and he's like, yeah, yes sir, what, what, what do you need? And he said, I heard you just bought a BMW. He goes, that's right, it's, it's the best car I've ever owned. It's great handling, it's fast, it's an awesome car, I love it. I can't believe, you know, that it's just an awesome car. And the uh, Scientology boss said, you have to sell it. You have to sell it right away. And the guy was, the worker was like, why? I, I mean, I just, I, I bought it yesterday. I just got it. And he said, um, there's no way that anyone working for Scientology can buy a car that was made in Germany, the most suppressive country in the world. The worker sold the car, and he hasn't bought a car since that I know of. The reason why the Scientology boss called Germany the most suppressive country in the world is because Germany has questioned the activities of Scientology. 
the boss in this story is David Miscavige. The worker was the executive director international of Scientology. That's how, that's how, Scientolo that's how Germany is viewed by Scientology. They, when I worked in the film crew, and um, we built a brand new studio at, at Golden Era Productions, we had to buy lights, cine lights, lights to light movie sets. Um, the manufacturer that makes the best lights in the world is a company called Airy. It's a German company. We were not allowed to buy Airy lights because they were made in Germany. We had to buy subpar American lights because we couldn't support the country of Germany from Scientology. You guys, you can decide um, what I've said today and how that applies to you. And I know there's people here from other countries. Um, I know that um, a lot of things happened while I was there. It, these are my opinions on what I experienced from my 15 years working there. Um, if I, what I say today makes it so that one person doesn't get involved with Scientology, um, it would be well worth it. If what I said today makes it so no one else gets involved in Scientology, it would be priceless. Thank you very much. I hope.